Can a single decision lead to a major ecological disaster? In this video, we will tell you a true story about one of the biggest environmental mistakes in history, where the introduction of a small animal caused the extinction of entire species and destroyed the natural balance of whole islands. How did a simple idea to combat pests turn into a serious threat to wildlife? That's what we'll explore in today's video. All right, before we dive into the rest of this, if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what you're seeing, hit that like button. It seriously helps the channel a ton. The venomous bites of the Okinawa habu snakes have long been a major problem in some regions of Japan, causing numerous injuries and even fatalities. For instance, in 1980, approximately 400 people were bitten by these venomous snakes, and some did not survive. Although there are other types of venomous snakes in Japan, the greatest threat came from large snakes like the habu and its relatives. The eastern snakes, all these snakes belong to a single family that includes rattlesnakes and puff adders, and they resemble coral snakes and cobras. The main danger lay in the fact that the antivenom for these snakes was not readily available for a long time. Even when an antivenom was discovered, it was difficult to access, especially in rural areas where snake bites were frequent. The antivenom was in liquid form and could not be stored in those remote areas due to the lack of electricity or suitable storage conditions. Moreover, installing power lines in those areas would have required a long time and massive resources. As for innovating a new antivenom, there was difficulty determining if it was even feasible. But in the end, Japan decided to employ a solution that seemed brilliant at first glance. It chose to introduce an animal capable of killing snakes and immune to their venom. This animal is the mongoose. In 1979, about 30 small mongooses were brought to Amami Shima Island to confront the local threats. In addition to the venomous snakes, there were other threats, and the mongoose was also supposed to handle rats as an added benefit, or as one of the pest control objectives. The natural habitat of these mongooses included Asian countries such as India, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal, and Pakistan. Therefore, the wildlife in Japan was not prepared for such guests. After 14 years, specifically in 1993, the mongoose's impact on Amami Shima Island became completely clear, and the Japanese Ministry of the Environment issued warnings about the mongoose population explosion. The concern stemmed from the rapid increase in the mongoose population, which reached 10,000 by the year 2000. But the question here is, did the number of snakes decrease as expected? Technically, yes, but the mongoose was not responsible for this at all. Scientists discovered that the mongoose was not interested in venomous snakes, preferring rats and other small creatures as food. Initially, it was believed that the mongoose was the perfect solution due to certain characteristics that made it seem like the ideal. Fighter first, the mongoose was known for its speed and agility, making it a powerful opponent for the cobra, which is a relative of the habus neck. Second, the mongoose possesses acetylcholine receptors that make it less sensitive to cobra venom allowing it to survive bites that would kill other animals. Third, the mongoose evolved to be capable of killing snakes, displaying rapid reflexes and sharp teeth that it used to deliver fatal bites. Despite being a perfect snake killer, there was one problem. The mongoose is active during the day, while the habu snake is active during the night. This meant that the paths of the mongoose and the habu rarely crossed, rendering the solution ineffective as expected. The bigger problem was that the mongoose was looking for easier prey. It had no interest in the venomous snakes, but instead hunted local creatures like rabbits and birds. Thus, the mongoose was not a solution to the problem as initially thought. Over time, the mongoose population began to increase dramatically on the island, causing the situation to spiral out of control. Despite this, there was another reason why the mongoose was ineffective in solving the problem. If their activity times had coincided, it wouldn't have made a significant difference. The truth is that snakes are considered relatively complex prey, and hunting them requires significant effort. Why would the mongoose exhaust itself fighting venomous snakes when there are plenty of easier prey like rats and rabbits? In the end, it turned out that the mongoose was ineffective for the purpose it was introduced for, but they were highly successful at reproduction. In 2000, the Japanese government initiated an active program to reduce the mongoose population. The efforts to eradicate the mongoose were extremely complicated, with approximately 32,000 mongooses being captured. Despite these major efforts, it was difficult to get rid of all the mongooses due to their rapid reproduction rate. 
However, by April 2018, no new sightings of the mongoose were recorded on the island, and the eradication of all mongooses was officially declared. Experts were convinced that the mongooses had been completely eliminated from Amami Shima Island. But how did Japan succeed in dealing with this invasive species? The road to success was fraught with obstacles. Initially, the traps placed on roads were ineffective. They didn't attract the mongooses as expected. But over time, authorities began using specialized traps specifically designed to hold the mongooses without allowing them to escape. Poisoned bait and attractants were also used to lure the mongooses into the traps. Japan also utilized advanced monitoring techniques, including tracking dogs, which helped accurately pinpoint the mongooses' locations. These efforts were essential to the operation's success, as officials were eventually able to significantly reduce the mongoose numbers. Although the eradication of the mongooses was a costly operation, it proved essential for protecting the local environment. Now, some might ask, why all this trouble? Why didn't they just leave the mongooses alone? The answer is simple. The mongoose was not just a threat to the venomous snakes, but it posed a significant threat to the island's native species. The mongooses preyed on many local animals, including rabbits and small birds. As Amamishima Island is home to many rare and vulnerable species, these animals were in urgent need of protection. One of the species that was severely affected is the Amami rabbit, which became threatened with extinction because of the mongoose. These rabbits are considered living fossils because they represent the remnants of an ancient species that once lived on the mainland but is now found only on two small islands. Unfortunately, the mongoose contributed to the destruction of these rabbits' habitats, leading to a significant reduction in their numbers. In addition to the Amami rabbit, many other species on Amami Shima Island were harmed. At least 15 native animal species were threatened by the spread of the mongoose. The agricultural sector also began to suffer from the mongoose's effects, as the mongoose hunted farm birds and destroyed crops. Despite these damages, Japan managed to successfully tackle this problem, and it took about 25 years to eliminate all mongooses from Amamishima Island. Wherever invasive species enter a new area, they must be prevented from spreading and over-reproducing. If that initial moment is missed, it becomes very difficult to get rid of them later, and in some cases, it may be impossible. When the mongooses were completely removed, the situation began to gradually improve. The number of snake bites decreased significantly, reaching only about 60 cases per year by 2020. With the increasing availability of ant venom, fatalities from snake bites significantly decreased, indicating an improvement in the situation. However, despite the success of this operation, the mongoose still poses a threat in some other Japanese islands. In Okinawa Island, where mongooses were introduced about 70 years ago, a large population still exists. The lessons learned from Amamishima Island are expected to be applied in Okinawa. To prevent the further spread of mongooses there, the conditions on Okinawa Island are significantly more suitable for the mongoose compared to Amamishima. Okinawa enjoys higher temperatures, making the environment there closer to the mongoose's natural habitat. Consequently, the birth and survival rates for these invasive animals are higher there. Currently, the mongoose population is being controlled in the northern areas of Okinawa. While mongooses continue to thrive in the central and southern regions as before, there are fences in Okinawa that help reduce the mongoose population year after year. These fences are not very high and appear to be highly effective because the mongoose typically does not climb them. Japan is not the first country to resort to biological control. The small Asian mongoose has been introduced to many countries such as Cuba, Croatia, Jamaica, Haiti, Puerto Rico, Honduras, and Panama. Typically, things went well. But Hawaii was a different experience in the 19th and mid-20th centuries. At that time, the main crop in Hawaii was sugarcane, and farmers faced a major problem with rats that chewed on sugarcane stalks due to their sweet taste. These rats were destroying a significant percentage of the crop. The farmers found no effective way to combat them. In 1872, sugarcane farmers in Hawaii read an article about the success achieved by sugar producers in the Caribbean using the mongoose to fight rats. The system was relatively simple. The sugarcane farmers brought mongooses from India in the hope that they would eat the rats. Indeed, the rats decreased and the damage to the cane lessened. The farmers rejoiced at the success and began spreading this idea in newspapers. However, not everyone in Hawaii was enthusiastic about the idea as some believed more research was needed before bringing the mongoose to the island. Despite this, 
all these warnings were ignored. In the 1880s, 72 mongooses were brought from Jamaica to the Big Island. They were allowed to reproduce there, and subsequently, their offspring were sent to plantations on other islands. But what the farmers later discovered was surprising. Rats are nocturnal animals. While the mongoose is active during the day, meaning it did not interact effectively with the rats, instead of eliminating them, the mongoose began targeting other prey, making things worse rather than better. The mongooses in Hawaii started preying on native species of animals and plants, leading to a threat against many birds and turtles whose eggs were entirely vulnerable to attack by this voracious predator. Things worsened until the government decided to install special barriers to prevent mongooses from entering natural reserves and protected areas, and it became so difficult to control the mongoose population that their eradication became nearly impossible. Mongoose is responsible for the extinction of at least eight species of native Hawaiian birds, and these birds are currently listed as endangered species. The problem lies in the fact that the Hawaiian government did not treat the introduction of mongooses as biological control because they were not specifically evaluated before being imported, which made the situation much worse. Japan's experience with mongooses is considered an important lesson in how invasive species affect ecosystems and how to effectively combat these species. However, the success of such an experiment depends on advanced preparation and a deep understanding of the potential risks. The experience also offers valuable lessons to the entire world about the necessity of conducting comprehensive research and precise environmental assessments before introducing any exotic species into a new environment. Despite the success Japan achieved on Amamishima Island, the battle against invasive species is still ongoing especially on other islands like Okinawa. Simultaneously, scientists and environmentalists around the world continue to work on new and effective solutions to combat invasive species and prevent their spread. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.